So if you take everything that's in 300 sales books, six or eight of them are essentially how to close a deal. The whole book's about closing. And the 20 largest global training companies and take everything about closing and you try to simplify it, you can boil it down to six closing principles. Is so everybody ready for a challenge? <clears throat> All right, quiz question first. Raise your hand if you're a good closer. I'll rephrase that. If you know how to close the deal, raise your hand. Yay, one. <laughs> you, do, you two? Yeah. All right, two. Two good closers. So ready for the challenge? I have never met a salesperson worldwide in 22 developed countries where we've trained who knows all six closing principles, the neuroscience behind it, in other words, what's the, what's the neuroscience behind the closing principle, and the data behind it, which means what happens if you don't, if you don't use that particular principle. So everybody ready for that challenge? All right, here we go. Closing principle number one. Can you close before the buyer's ready? No, no. And if you try to, how's it come across to the buyer? Pushy. Pushy, Pushy awkward, yucky, awful, and may kill the probability of ever getting the sale. And the reason from neuroscience is, as soon as we come across as too aggressive or too pushy, from the buyer's old brain, the image of the pushy Carl's car salesperson flashes up. They attach that image to you. And now, what's, what's the probability of the sale going down to, do you think, from the Carnegie Institute? Zero. Yeah, it's really low. It's like 5%. In other words, you may want that car, and that particular model is the only one on the lot, and no, no, in other words, you're going to buy it no matter how bad the salesperson is. Closing principle number two. If the buyer is ready, we don't recognize it. We keep on chatting and selling and showing more PowerPoint and more models on our cell phone and technology on our iPad. How long before the buyer gets bored, frustrated, upset, thinks we're a business bozo and shifts back to no and stays there? How long do you think? It's not very long. In fact, it's dependent on those four personality styles. So for the high ego drive people, only a minute or two. For the lower ego drive people, the more cautious, thoughtful people, it's only several minutes. So if the buyer's ready and we never propose a close and they shift back to no, what's the probability of getting the sale now? What's it gone down to, do you think? Three. Way down to 10%. Meaning 10% of the buyers will close themselves because they want your stuff so badly, it doesn't matter how bad you are, they're going to buy it. Third closing principle, how do you tell? How do you know when it's exactly the right time to propose the close? Because you are positive the buyer is going to say yes. He tells you. Buyer should. So part of it's in the dialogue, isn't it? It's the, the way the conversation is going. They're talking about timing, implementation, collaboration, teamwork, pricing. Everybody agree? You can kind of tell the way the conversation is going. That's 45% of the signals. The other 55%? Body language. If you see a mismatch between the buyer's lips, what they're saying, and what the, body's, uh, the buyer's body's showing, so there's a mismatch, which one do you always know to believe? Body language. Body language are the true signals. Who's better? By the way, I've asked this of maybe 25,000 salespeople over all these years. Guess how many people said, oh, no, no, it's the buyer's lips that are the true signals? How many people? Two. And they misunderstood the question. So who's better at interpreting body language, men or women? Women. I've asked this question of 25,000 people. Guess how many people said men were better? The same two. <laughs> so why are women better? They pay closer attention. I know they're better at everything, but I mean, why are they better at this specific activity, reading body language? How come? Well, it goes back to neuroscience. Are they more expressive so they understand body language a little better? Back to neuroscience. It's the Mars-Venus stuff. Our brains are wired differently. 
So the male brain is either right or left brain dominated. The women's brains are connected in many more connections called synapses. So it makes women much better at multitasking. They can keep two balls in the air. If you watch your wife, right, or a partner with doing all this stuff at the same time. We men are great linear thinkers. We can do one thing well at a time. It also makes, with all these connections, it makes women more perceptive or intuitive. So they naturally, among other things, read body language and we men don't. It also goes way back to evolution. The male went out to hunt. <clears throat> the, the female stayed behind to watch the kids. She had to be very aware of her surroundings, didn't she? So she didn't get eaten by a wild animal or hauled off by another hunter. So the w male and female brains have just developed differently. I'm sure we've all heard the Mars-Venus stuff. That's essentially, that's, all that book's right, all based on neuroscience. So in other words, we men have to learn to interpret body language. For women, it just comes naturally. It's one advantage is women have over men in sales. Kind of interesting. Here's an example. Men, remember when you were 13 or 14? Remember how difficult it was to figure out exactly the right time to kiss the girl? Remember that? Any of you men figured it out yet? <laughs> I had a middle-aged guy in a training once the other day, recently he said, I know, when she's asleep. I said, okay. <laughs> Was it Bill Cosby? <laughs> <laughs> this is not politically correct, but I'll give you a couple of bucks. <laughs> So it's a combination of the body language and the dialogue that lets you know. So here's why this is the weakest uh, skill of all skills. In developed countries, two-thirds of the salespeople are men. So here's the data behind it. True in the US, true in China, true in Canada. So two-thirds of the salespeople are men. Only 10% have had the training to be able to interpret body language as well as women. So since they can't read body language, most men, they get close to the closing point. They know one thing for sure. They don't want to try to close too early because they know the negative effect it has on people. So they beat around the bush. They ask what are called weak trial closes. There's books written on how to do weak trial closing. They ask weak trial closes. They beat around the bush. They hope the buyer will close themselves. What percent of the buyers will close themselves? Ten. Only 10% and they lose the sale. That's why this is the weakest skill. That's the data behind it. Now we've all heard of the late great Zig Ziglar, right? The great motivational sales speaker, trainer. He has 100 pithy statements. We've covered a couple. No sales, no company. You never get a, a second chance to make a first impression. Well, he's got a whole bunch of them. Does anybody know his pithy statement about timid salespeople? They have skinny kids. Yes, timid salespeople have skinny kids. It's bad, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That's true. All right, fourth closing principle. Do buyers want a two-paragraph two close? They want a real, definitive, short closing approach. For example, Bruce, would you like to get this project started this year on June 15th? Is there any ambiguity in what I've asked Bruce for? I've just directly asked Bruce for the business, haven't I? So buyers want a direct close. And again, most male salespeople don't want to give a direct close because they're afraid it'll come across as pushy. They're not quite sure. So they give a mushy close. Fifth closing principle. Once you propose the close, how long should you be silent? <clears throat> so another Ziegler pithy statement, he who speaks next loses. Or as Jill Conrath, uh, another famous motivational speaker will say, she who speaks next owns the product. Now the car from the Carnegie Institute, this silence never lasts longer than 30 seconds. But how long can 30 seconds seem? <laughs> Forever. So what's the rationale behind this? What's the neuroscience? Why should you be silent until the buyer responds? How come? 
This is all 15 U.S. Sales Training Institute classes throughout every book on sales. Once you propose to close, be silent, let the buyer respond. How come? You don't want to give him a chance to change his mind? Um, that's actually part of the sixth closing principle, which we're not quite to yet. You don't want to interrupt his thinking. You don't want to the buyer's thinking because in many cases, the buyer, the buyer may be thinking, they may be processing what you said, they may be comparing what you said to what others have said, they may be considering. And so if you interrupt their thinking, they're no longer thinking. And does it come across as polite or rude? Rude. rude. So that's the reason you should never interrupt the buyer, let the buyer respond. Because if you speak next, it actually comes across as rude. And actually, when you look at the advice behind this, everybody's kind of heard, he who speaks next loses. But how about you're sitting in the chair waiting for the buyer to respond? Should you wiggle around a lot? No. No, so that the second part of the advice is don't eat anything that would distract the buyer from considering and thinking. The sixth closing principle. So you've shaken hands, everybody's agreed. So what would be the sixth closing principle? You were getting to it, Jeff. Stop selling. Stop selling. Quit trying to, don't try to upsell, cross-sell, shift discussion to weather, sports, ice fishing, whatever. What's the reason for this? They've already made their decision. They've made their decision, but why not keep talking about the deal? Don't want to say think something about it any further. You could say something you could regret. I'll just give you two examples for me. So in my old engineering company, I'm in the Pentagon, we're selling a $2 million war gaming simulation. I'm the sales guy selling to the Navy captain. I've got my smart guy, PhD physics, war gaming expert guy, the technical guy. And then there's the Navy technical guy, PhD ops research, the technical buyer. So we got the user buyer and the economic buyer in the Navy captain, he's both and the technical buyer. I close the deal with the Navy captain, he agrees. My smart technical guy keeps talking to the Navy smart technical guy. And after about five minutes, the Navy smart guy says, I didn't realize your simulation didn't cover that. Now where were we? Back to square one. Back to square one. Took two more months to reclose the deal. So you'll hear a lot of the top salespeople say to technical buyers, <clears throat> And the trouble with technical buyers, of course, is they're very smart, aren't they? They know a lot. And so do they want to share it with a customer or not? Actually, they're dying to share it. And so if you're taking technical people with you on a sales call, tell them. Once I get the buyer talking in a needs analysis, if you interrupt the buyer, I will kill you. <laughs> so what happened to your smart guy? <laughs> he was notorious. We all tried to kill him. <laughs> Secondly, tell the technical guy, once I propose the close to the buyer, if you speak next, I will kill you. And third, once the buyer's agreed, if you keep talking about the deal, I will. I'll kill you. So here's another example. So every now and then I, I get involved with, I usually coach CEOs or sales managers. I used to coach salespeople 10, 15 years ago, but now we have three great women to do it, so I don't do it much anymore. But every now and then, if we have a lot of business with the company it's, and it's the son of the owner and he wants me to coach his son, I'll do it. So I'm coaching one of these about a year ago. He's selling CRM. <clears throat> They're actually doing pretty well. By the way, does the son of the owner usually have a lot of aptitude for sales? <laughs> Michael's an exception, but no. <laughs> so, <my opinion. laughs> so he's he's selling a CRM system to the CIO of a manufacturing company, and you don't see this on the video in a bit. And he gets right down to the end, and he says uh, uh, they, they agree and they shake hands. He shuts his laptop down. And he gets this huge infectious <laughs> smile on his face, and he says, "Thank you so much." He said, because, you know, this will be the first time we've implemented CRM in a, in a manufacturing company like yours. <laughs> so what was the buyer's reaction? <laughs> the first time? Was it? So that's the sixth principle. Once the buyer's agreed, quit talking about the deal.